Well, calls are growing for Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Fonnie Willis to step down from the election interference case against former President Trump. I mean, can she do the job with all that's going on? That's the question. She herself is snarled in a messy love triangle, allegedly, and faces calls to resign for paying her alleged lover, Nathan Wade, big money, $650,000, despite him having no experience. She put him on the Trump case, arguably the biggest case of her career, and paid him, and now stuff's happening. Here's Trump's attorney. I think there's a general concern in this country right now, and, and this sheds light on that, Martha, in that we're appointing these individuals to positions of power where they have access to taxpayer money, and they're selecting cases to become more famous, not do the right thing. And then we see this slew of corruption that eventually comes down, including this story. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds with this, the Lord did not cause you to stumble into $600,000 in taxpayer money because you're sleeping with the lead prosecutor. There's prosecutorial misconduct. Fani should be removed and disbarred. Steve Harrigan on the story in Marietta, Georgia now. Steve. Harris, the fight today is over divorce proceedings, whether or not they should be unsealed and whether that district attorney, Fonnie Willis, should be forced to be deposed to give testimony in this divorce case. Another hearing coming up next month will look at whether the two behaved improperly and whether they improperly used taxpayer money to take vacations. Many are already beginning to say that the district attorney should step aside. Uh, I think that the case is... If it hasn't gone off the rails already, it's about to. Um, and I don't see I don't see anything good coming from her staying in charge of the case at this point. Um, and uh, I think a lot good can happen if she steps away. Uh, this is a obviously a huge distraction. We've already gotten a hint at what might be in those divorce proceedings. On Friday, lawyers for the estranged wife released bank statements that show Nathan Wade bought plane tickets for himself and Willis to go to Miami, to go to San Francisco, to take a Caribbean cruise, and to rent a hotel in Napa Valley, California. Harris, back to you. Steve Harrigan, thank you. Charlie Hurt, now Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor. Now, some of those receipts that he was talking about from the travel came directly because the estranged wife, Joycelyn Wade, um, that's in part of her filing. And Fonnie Willis is accusing Wade, Joycelyn, <laughs> of harassing her and damaging her professional reputation, like allegedly sleeping around didn't do that. Um, <laughs> And, and she says she's doing that also by subpoenaing her for a deposition in the divorce case. Well, you want to win your divorce case and you think you found the woman who's been spending right. taxpayer money, that might be a way to do it. This, this gives meaning to the phrase uh, bringing the receipts. She's literally, literally bringing the receipts. It's all so incestuous. And I think that it very much plays to Donald Trump's benefit because it's such a soap opera. Like, right when you think politics can't so get any true. crazier, then this stuff happens. And, it, and I think it sort of undermines and reminds people that everywhere you have these highly partisan charges against Donald Trump, whether it's uh, Fulton County or, or New York City or Washington, D.C., they're some of the most lawless places. And this just adds a whole veneer of sort of grossness to it that I think uh, kind of helps him in his political argument that these are partisan charges. All right, let's talk about this case for a bit. Legally, I've been reading, uh, they cannot remove her from the role while, you know, this is going on. And she has said she will not step away. So then they would need to put, and by the way, Nathan Wade, her alleged lover, worked as a municipal court judge, mainly in traffic law and family law. And Fox Research found that he had never been involved litigating a felony. But he's in charge yeah. of the election interference case of Donald Trump. Yeah. And they have put so much effort into this case. Uh, and, and, yeah, money. And, and money. And uh, money, obviously, as we saw with the receipts. And then, uh, and, and then meanwhile, you know, it's not like Atlanta is the safest place to walk around at night. It's not like there is, aren't oh, they have other plenty crimes they could going be doing. on in Atlanta. And, but this is their focus. And again, you know, it, it goes back to the, the, the political argument that that Donald Trump makes, which is, this is all partisan. This has nothing to do with law and order. 
Uh, former President Trump, speaking of which, is teasing supporters about a potential vice president choice even before a single ballot has been cast in tomorrow's New Hampshire primary. Some high-profile Republicans are talking up their outspoken advocacy of Trump and his policies. Certainly, if the president asked, I would, I would have to think about it because I want to help him however I can. The only thing I want is four more years of Donald Trump and a Republican majority in the Senate, <laughs> majority in the House, and the White House. And if I can help achieve that through my endorsement by being on the campaign trail in my home state of South Carolina for the next four or five weeks and then beyond, that's the goal. I'm not getting into any conversations with President Trump, but I've said for over a year I'd be honored to serve in this administration in any capacity. Your thoughts. So obviously, uh, you've got people like Elise Stefanik and Tim Scott who are getting a jump on the sort of veep stakes. Uh, you know, they're doing their best to sort of uh, audition for the job. Do you jump. see either one of them based on what you know about Donald um, Trump? Well, well of course, policy? anybody who says anything about how, whether they what they th they think they know something doesn't know what they're talking about because I don't <laughs> okay. think he, even Donald Trump he sort of hints that he 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 has somebody in mind, but I think that that is a uh, sort of a, he's very good at keeping people interested mm -hmm. and keeping pe you know keeping the attention, keeping the <laughs> Marketing. Amazon. Yeah, marketing. Um, uh, so, I, you know, I, I think that he, you know, the big picture, he's got an embarrassment of riches. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, you, you know, trying to discount Ron DeSantis. I don't think you can discount Ron DeSantis. Oh, now that's interesting, I, too. I, I, think, I think that, you know, if you look at what he said about Ron DeSantis, uh, uh, I, you know, it, it's politics. You know, you get strange bedfellows. People make up, if it's in Donald Trump's best interest in the, spring, in the summer, to hook up with Ron DeSantis, he will. I will say, however, I think that his comments about Nikki Haley were rather Sherman-esque. He said, she's not presidential timber. He said, uh, and then he went further to say, I'm saying this so that you can hold me accountable to the fact that I said that. This, and, it, and it was almost sort of like a pledge. Um, and, and I always look oh. at these things, you know, when, you, when, when, you, when he says, when he discounts somebody, can you use those words in an ad against him? You could use the Nikki comments against That's it. very interesting. Charlie Hurt, always bringing new stuff. Good to see Good you. Good to see you. Happy New Year, by yeah, the way. Stay it's warm. It's not too late, is it? No. no. Stay warm. It's 11 degrees outside. It's balmy. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.